everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this witch's cat hat that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this witch's cat hat, which you can see I've made a pre one previously here, um, you'll need, of course, some yarn, and I'm going to suggest that you use three different colors, but it's entirely up to you. Um, I am you previously used the green, and I'm going to use the purple in place of the green this time, and the, this lighter color will make it easier to show up on camera. Um, you need a black or any other color you like for the, the sort of ribbon or band around the base of the hat. And then you'll need some yellow or gold or some color that you prefer to make this little buckle or to embroider the little buckle. So that's how I've done it. You you know, you can do it without the band and the buckle. Just do the, the one color hat. It's entirely up to you. But I'm going to suggest that you have those three colors. So I've got my three there. Now these are all about a two weight, um, the sort of wool wool acrylic blends the yeah yeah they're all wool acrylic blends in about a two weight for the hat part i'm going to use a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook just because i want those stitches to be a little bit tighter in in the actual hat now you've got the option of using a larger hook and i'm going to use a 3.5 millimeter in this case for the base part and that will become clearer as we move through. We're going to first make the hat, and I'm going to use my smaller hook, like I said. And then we're going to move into making this little base part that ties onto your cat's head. Okay. Then you'll need the usual things like some scissors. You'll need a quite a sharp darning needle the sharp point we're going to do a bit of sewing, or you can use two different needles. We're going to sew the base onto the hat and also we're going to embroider the little buckle so yes and from there you might want a pin just to hold your hat in place before you sew it onto the base and a stitch marker for making the hat is a great idea we're working in just in the round so um, yeah you might want a stitch marker and I certainly find that really helpful Okay, so the stitches and techniques that you'll need to know to make this little and very cute witch's hat. Uh, you'll need to know how to make a magic ring, how to slip stitch, how to make a chain, how to single crochet, and then from there you'll just need to have some, oh actually single crochet in the front loop only, and I'll show you what that means. Um, you need to know how to change colors and then from there it's just a matter of knowing how to do some basic sewing techniques that will sew the base to the hat and then also create this little embroidery buckle so it's definitely beginner friendly it's a little bit more fiddly than some of my other projects but it's uh you know it's definitely beginner friendly and as you can see it is way cute so let's get started Okay, so take your main yarn color, and mine is this this purple lavender color. Now I'm going to use a double strand just because I this yarn is actually really fine, and I just want to um, it's a baby yarn this one, and I just want to have my hat a little bit bigger than what it will turn out with just one strand. So you know you don't have to use two strands, just use one if if you're happy with uh, the size of your yarn. Now we're going to make a uh, a magic ring. So there's lots of ways to do it, but I do it this way. And if you're not sure on how to do a magic ring, please brush up on another YouTube tut tutorial or, you know, whatever your resources to remind yourself how to make a magic ring. Now, we're going to put four single crochets into the magic ring. So you can chain here if you want to. I don't usually chain here, but just place four single crochets into your magic ring two three and four now this top part of the hat is going to be a little bit fiddly so just a uh, just a caution there it's, it's 
just a little bit fiddly. So pull your ring closed, just pulling on the tail, and then take your stitch marker and mark your last stitch, your fourth stitch. So just, just keep a, a bit of a count here as you move around, okay? So make sure you've got your four stitches, and we're going to work in the round, placing one single crochet in each stitch, until we've reached four rounds. Now what that does is it gives us this little peak on the hat here. So working in the round for four rounds, just one single crochet in each stitch. So we don't slip stitch to join in, in the hat pattern, okay? So just go straight to your first stitch and insert your hook. And it is a little bit fiddly, so you're just going to have to have a little bit of patience with this fir these first few rounds. So, especially if you're using a stitch marker. So that's one. And then move along to the second stitch. Place one single crochet in there. Along to the next stitch. Third stitch, place one single crochet. And then remove your stitch marker and place one single crochet into that fourth. This yarn splits a little bit too into that fourth stitch. And then mark once again your fourth stitch. Now what will happen is it will probably fold in on itself. So you've just got to very carefully as you move down the rows, around the rows, you just want to turn it in the right way and I'll mark that last stitch and then you're just going to move around doing the same thing so just make sure that you keep a close count on your stitches and you're just placing one single crochet in each of your four stitches so you've done one round there, so you're going to do it for three more rounds. And if you want to, you don't have to do four rounds. You could, If you don't want the peak very long, if you just want a short little peak, you could just do, say, let's do, do two rounds. If you want a longer, a longer peak that you can fold over, you can do, let's say, six rounds. So it's entirely up to you. I do four, and that gives this sort of size peak in proportion to the rest of the hat. So I'm going to continue round, and you do the same, and I'll meet you once you've done the number of rounds you want to create that little, that little peak. So continue around, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm just at the end of my fourth round, so I'm just going to take that stitch marker out, and place my last stitch, my fourth stitch in there. I'll mark my last stitch again. And that's our little that's the little peak of our hat. So now we're going to start to increase the hat, increase the size. So you're going to place we're going to increase to six in this round. So in that first stitch, place two again it's a little bit fiddly. Place two, especially with that stitch marker. So place two single crochets and the tail. Well, actually, what you can do at this point, if you want to, is and what I tend to do, is I tend to get my tail out of the way and stuff it down into that little peak. Now, if, if it's not bothering you, you can, you know, just keep it loose. But I'm going to just stuff that down inside. Get it out of the way. Just make sure it's pulled nice and tight. Your magic ring. And I've got much longer tail than I really need there. So anyway, what I usually do is I stuff that down and I get my tail out of the way. So I might just go and do that off camera just so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing as well. And actually the other thing you can do to get the tail out of the way is just find somewhere that you can get your hook into without causing too much trouble to the shape and just pull pull temporarily your tail 
through to the other side. Oh, now I'm having trouble with that too. There we go. That's one one end of it, and I'll just get the other end. So that's that's a way you can move your tail out of the way too. Eventually, we'll pull it back through to the inside, obviously, but that just gets it out of the way for now. So we'll continue a round. And as I said, we're going to increase in this round. So find your first stitch and we're going to place two single crochets into that first stitch. One and two. And then in the next stitch we're going to place one single crochet. And then in the last two stitches we're just repeating that. So two single crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And then in that last stitch, come on through. In that last stitch we're going to place just one single crochet. And it is very fiddly until you get to a slightly bigger increase. So there we go. Last stitch, one single crochet. Come on through. There we go. And remark your last stitch. So we've got six single crochets in our round now. Now we're going to do that again. So we're just going to repeat that same row. So two single crochets in that first stitch. One single crochet in the next. Two in the next. One in the next. Two in the second to last. One and two. And then one in the last. And then once again, remark. My tail's still in the way. <laughs> and then remark your last stitch. Okay, so now we've got nine stitches. Now we're going to increase again. So in that first stitch, two single crochets. And two. And the next two stitches, one single crochet each. So one and two. So that's one single crochet in each of those next two stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So next stitch is two single crochets. Next two stitches is just one single crochet and it's already getting much easier to work now. The stitches are much clearer. One and two. And then one more time. So two single crochets in the next stitch. One single crochet in the second to last stitch. And then remove your stitch marker and one single crochet in that last stitch. Once again, mark your stitch. And you can see it's starting to increase quite nicely there. 
Okay, moving on to the next round, we're going to just place in this round one single crochet in each stitch. One and two. So you've got uh, 12 stitches and you're just going to place one single crochet in each of those 12 stitches. So you go ahead and do that to finish off this round and I'll meet you at the end of mine. Okay, so just finishing off that single crochet round, one in each stitch. Now that's the end of, if you've done the same as what I've done with the number of rows that you, or rounds that you did in your, your peak, this should be round eight. So that's the end of round eight. Okay, so moving on, we're going to increase again. So in that first stitch, place two single crochets. In the next, and uh, it'll be the next three stitches, place one single crochet. In the next stitch, two single crochets. In the next three, one single crochet. One, two, and three. And then you'll have four stitches remaining, so just repeat that pattern one more time. So two single crochets, one single crochet in the final three stitches. Two. And last one, three. And remark your stitch. Okay, so we've got 15 stitches, and in this next round, we're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch, just as we did uh, before. So go ahead and do a row of just one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, moving on to what will be row 11. So this time we're going to do another increase. So two single crochets in that first stitch. And then this time, continuing in the increases, we'll place one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Two, three, and four. So increasing by another three stitches to take our stitch count to 18. So continue around, repeat that again. So two in the two single crochets in the next stitch. And then one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And I'll meet you once I get round to the end of my round. Okay, so that's the end of row 11. Now for the next two rows, rows 12 and 13, we're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch. So you should now have 18 stitches. So just place one single crochet in each stitch for the next two rounds. So finish this round off and do one more round of just one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, so I'm just at the end of my round 13 here, and that's my last single crochet in that last stitch. Okay, uh, we've got a, another increase round now, so two single crochets in that first stitch, and then one single crochet in the next five stitches. So we're just increasing in the round. You know, it's a pretty pretty classic increase. We've just got it working a few rows in or rounds in between each of the increases. So now have I done enough there? Two, one, two, three, four, five. Yep. And then in the next stitch two and then one single crochet in the next five stitches. So continue in your round and uh, I'll do the same. 
and once again just placing my last stitch into that round and replace my stitch marker okay so the next two rounds we've got just a round two rounds of one single crochet in each stitch so once again you go ahead and complete those two rounds so two rounds now finish this round one more round of one single crochet in each stitch and then we've got um, one more increase before we start to make the we, before we we uh, sorry before we change color and then we start to make this area here okay so continue around for your two more rounds and two two rounds here of of uh, one single crochet in each stitch and I'll see you at the end of my two rounds okay so once again I'm placing my last stitch in this round and then as I said we've got one more increase round before we change color if indeed you are changing color so um, if you're making your witch's hat in a traditional black I it's just impossible to demonstrate this in black um, just because it's too hard to see on camera and the stitches are so small so I'm making them colorful and I kind of like the idea of a colorful witch's hat anyway but you will change to, if you're cho choosing to change colour and you're, you've made your main part of your witch's hat black, then you'll want to change to a different colour for the the band or the ribbon that goes around the, the base of the hat. So, you know, the colours are entirely up to you. Um, so, like I said, we've got one more increase round and then we're going to change colours. So, let's do that increase round. So, it's just as before. So, two single crochets in that first stitch and then one single crochet in the next six stitches so you'll finish that increase round off repeating that pattern just as you've been doing for the others this one has is just got six single crochets in between each of the increases so you go ahead and finish off this final increase round um, like I said before we change color and I'll see you soon okay so I'm at the point where I want to change my color so I'm changing as you know to black where's my black where's my black okay so I'm changing to black for this for this ribbon part so you know there's a few different ways you can change color I'll j I just do it a re in a really simple way but just um yeah, so what you'll do, don't don't cut your end of the of the main colour because we're going to continue with that colour. So I just put my um, my yarn, my new colour over my hook. I just pull up a loop, and then I just just tighten. Now normally I would chain one, but I'm not going to here because we're working in the round. Okay. So then for the next two rounds, using your new colour, you're just going to. And you can work in your tail if you want to, or you just can tuck it in because the inside of the hat's not going to be not going to be visible. But if you work it in, it's a little bit more secure. So actually, I think I might work mine in as I go. So you're just going to do two rounds of single crochet in your new color, and then we're going to start on the brim of the hat so go ahead do two rounds to create your your band around the the base of the hat one single crochet just in each stitch and I'm going to do the same and I'll meet you once I've done my two rounds in my black and just a reminder just when you get back to your join just be careful that you don't um, add a stitch there just make sure you go it can look like you've got an extra stitch in there but just go straight on to and it's li sometimes a little bit hard to get your hook in there but just go straight on to the the black in the next round and then just continue around and if you're working in black it's a bit harder to see so just again make sure that you're not skipping any stitches and I'll see you at the end of this round okay so I'm just finishing off my second round there of my black and so you should have 24 stitches 
in these two rounds. Let's put my stitch marker back in. Now we're just going to leave again, leave that tail and we're going to pick up again the our main colour. So just pull up a loop of your main colour from the inside there. Let's tighten the your other colour. Um, now we're going to start on the the brim here. Okay, so starting this this brim area here. So this is where we need to work into the front loop only. So locate your first stitch, and again, it's hard to see on the black, but when you when you look at your stitches, each of them has a V, and this will be really hard for you to see in in black, but each of them has a V, and we want to work just into this front loop, so the loop closest to you. Are you able to see that there? So the loop closest to you in each of the stitches in this round. So we want the, the brim to bend um, outwards. So locate that first stitch and just work into, like I said, that's going to be really tricky for you to see. I'm just working into one loop there. Okay, so you're just working a single crochet as normal. We're actually going to work two single crochets in that first stitch. We'll get out that way of that black. But you're only working into the front loop. Okay, and this round is going to be also an increase round, but we're going to increase um, this way. We're going to increase two, two in the first stitch, in the next stitch, one. And then next stitch two in that front loop only. And then one. So that's the repeating pattern. Two, one, two, one. So two stitches in the first stitch. And then one stitch in the next. Okay, so continue around creating your brim. And I'll do the same working in that increasing increasing pattern and I'll see you when I get around to here. Okay so I've just finished my front loop only round there and now this next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch and this is our second to last round so just work one single crochet in each stitch for the for this next round and then we'll come back and we'll finish off the final round together. Okay, so I'm just placing my last two stitches in this second to last round. And then we've got one more round to go. And it will just be repeating that first round we did on the brim, not in the first front loop only, but we'll be doing the increase again of two single crochets in that first stitch. And then one single crochet in the next. Two in the next. And then one in the next. And then that will be the main part of your hat finished. So that will be all of the hat finished. And then we're going to just finish off the ends. We'll, we'll sew in the ends. Most of the ends we can just put into the inside of the hat. And then we'll sew or we'll embroider this little buckle on the front. So go ahead and finish your final round with your increases. So two in the first stitch and one in the next stitch and do that all the way around until you finish up this final round. Okay I'm just placing my final stitch and now because we've been working in the round it's a little bit uneven there so just slip stitch in the, to the first stitch in the round then yarn over and pull through, Oops. two strands it's a bit more tricky, so just yarn over, pull out a tail and you can snip off any excess and then you can also snip off 
your other your black end just leave a good amount of that black end we're just going to leave it on the inside of the of the hat so just poke that in now we're going to of course have to pull through our tail again so just your tail from the beginning that you moved out of the way if you did I'm just going to have to pull it back into the center so just get your hook in there so I'm going to perhaps finish that off camera not bore you with oh there we go I've got that through now there we go we're through so just pull that that tail back through and so there's your finished hat now there's a couple of ends to weave in here of course so you can take your darning needle and we can do this first one together hopefully my two strands will get through this there we go now to finish this one off I just I do a little invisible stitch so in the next stitch along just to show you this technique you don't have to do this at all you, but I just do a little neat finishing stitch it's actually going to be at the back of the hat so it's actually not a big deal so I just work under both loops of the next stitch and then I come back down through the center of the previous stitch like I said this is going to be at the back of the hat so the same with that little change of color area that's all at the back of the hat so it's not going to be super visible and then just weave through your end into the brim of the hat there and I'll just try to so whenever you're working in the round there's always that little uneven uneven bit at the end there and I'll just try to even that up a little bit and then weave my end in So you go ahead, just finish off weaving in that end. It doesn't have to be well in. You can snip off the excess because we're actually going to sew this onto the top of the base eventually. So we'll just stuff all those ends into the inside of the hat. Also acts like a little bit of stuffing. So there's the main part of our hat. Now you'll take your yellow or whatever colour that you've decided to use for the buckle. And there, you know, there's a few different ways to do this. I'm going to show you how I do it. So just thread your needle with some yellow. That's a good, a good amount. So work out where your front bit is, where you're going to sew your buckle. And what I do is I just come up, so let's say I want it, my center is there. It's going to come up into, into that area there. Just pull my needle through and just pull through a good, good length. And then I'm going to come down into the base of the the black band black area there so that's that creates one edge of my little square buckle and then in underneath I'm going to come up up on the other side at the base there and then I'm going to double back and create a second side of my buckle and then you, because you're working in the back and none of this is going to be seen in the back you can just I'm going to come up on the oops come up just on the diagonal so 
You want to get this as neat as you can. Just working, there we go. Coming up, so I've come up on that top side of the band there and then I'm going to work down where I placed at the edge of that, at the end of that other side. And then I'm going to come back up on this other side. And what I tend to do is I tend to do um, two, two, two strands on each side of the buckle. So I'm just working it into a square. Okay, so I've got my little square there. And then if you want to, like I usually do, or I did definitely do it on the last one and I prefer it, is I just go over it again. So hopefully that's kind of clear what I've done, but you can just do it your own way. And you can make as much of a mess at the back as you want to bring it up to that front side because it's not going to be seen. So I'm just doubling up each oops, doubling up each of the strands just to make my buckle a little bit thicker. And across. And then I've just got one more. Let's just come up down the bottom, oops, down the bottom there. And one more on this side. So yeah, you can you can do that however you want to do it, but there we go, we've got our little buckle. And then what I do, because I always allow plenty, I'll cut off both of those. So one end is joined to my yarn, and I'm working on a slope here, so I'm sorry that's rolling around. So I just cut, so one end that I was sewing with, and then the other end was attached to my yarn, so I just take those two away, and then I just tie a little simple knot in the back here, just to make sure that's secure. And tuck, tuck those in as well. And there's your little hat done. So we're going to move on to making the base. Okay, so we're moving on to the base. And so this is what's going to allow you to um, place the, the uh, hat on top of your cat's head. So the ears go in here. This is the ties. That go underneath the chin and then we just have this little this little round disc that we're going to sew onto the hat okay so we have to make this round disc this area for the ears and these little ties so i'm going to once again double up my yarn let me just get that i'm going to double strand my yarn now you can choose you can choose the same color as your hat or you can choose a different color, you know, it's entirely up to you. So we'll once again make a magic ring. So do that however you do that. And then we're going to insert six single crochets into our ring. So that's one. And two. So go ahead and place those six single crochets into your ring. I'll do the same and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my six single crochets in there. And I'm just going to pull the tail to close my ring. And then in this one, you remember in the hat we worked in the spiral, in the, in the round, we're going to uh, do the base slightly differently. And we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch. So you, sh you know, unless you want it, you, you shouldn't need your slip, st uh, your sorry, your stitch marker here, but you can certainly st still use it if you would like to. Okay, so we're going to chain one and move on to round two. So in each stitch, we're going to place two single crochets. So it's just going to be a classic increase to create the disc or the uh, the you know the circle or. I'm just going to make a classic increase flat disc 
that will sit underneath the hat. So you go ahead in round two, place two single crochets in each stitch, and I'll see you at the end of my round two. Okay, so with two single crochets in each stitch, you should have 12 stitches, and then you'll just slip stitch into your first stitch. So you can count your stitches and just make sure that you're on track. So we're going to continue our increases, increasing to 18 stitches. So chain one, place two single crochets in that first stitch. Now what I should say actually before we um, move too much further, um, yeah, sorry, I'll come back to that in a moment. You've placed two single crochets in the first stitch. What you just need to keep in mind is you want to make this disc um, smaller than the rim of the hat. Okay, so that's why I got you to make the hat first. So you can make your disc smaller than the rim of your hat. And the size that you get will depend on the yarn that you're using and the hook that you're using. And I forgot to mention at the beginning I've moved to my 3.5mm hook for this, this base because I, I don't need the small the small size hook so I'm making that using a three and a half millimeter so just to keep that in mind keep the size of your the base of your hat in mind so your your disc will sit on the inside of the hat allowing the outside rim of the hat to be exposed okay so starting round three we've put our two single crochets in that first stitch and then in the next stitch just in line with a classic increase, we're going to place one single crochet. Next stitch, two single crochets. And next stitch, one. So go ahead and finish your round three. You'll have 18 stitches when you finish this round. So it's two and then one, two and then one. So just a classic increase, and I'll see you when I get back to the end of my round. Okay, I'm just placing my last stitches in the end of round three and single crochet in that last stitch slip stitch to join and then you may wish to stop here if you feel like that's big enough for your disc depending on the size of your hat just just check that out but I'm going to go for another round and I think one more will be fine so if we're following in line with a classic increase, we'll put two in that first stitch, two single crochets in that first stitch, and then one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Two in the first one, so if our stitches are in groups of three, and then one in each of the next two. So continue that pattern of 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1 until you get round to the end of your round 4 and I'll meet you there. Okay, I've just placed my last single crochet in this round. Slip stitch to join. And I'm just going to check, but I think that's going to be enough, enough for me. Yes, it's going to be perfect. Now if you want to make your disc slightly bigger, go for another round. And hopefully you're seeing the pattern. So if you're going for another round, do two single crochets in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next three stitches. So just again, following the pattern of a classic increase. And so do another round if you need it. Now we're going to move on and create the round that will add the ear holes. Okay, so moving on. So we're going to chain one. Now place what what we're going to work with. Now what you you might see in your in your um, with your increases is it gets these very slight this really slight hexagonal shape. Okay, so see if you can make that out on your own work. So what you're going to do is your ear hole is going to come ha from halfway in this first side, cover this side here and join on halfway of the second side. So hopefully that makes sense. So why I say it to do it that way is because if you've made this slightly bigger, it won't, it won't matter about the number of stitches. It'll just be, so from halfway here, you'll start your ear holes, you'll chain for your ear holes, and then you'll join them at the halfway point of this side of the hexagon, if we're picturing this as a hexagon, okay? 
So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to, for my little disc here, I'm going to place a single crochet in that first stitch. And then I think I'll do one in the next stitch as well. And that will take me to about halfway down this first side. And then I'm going to start my chain. So it will depend on the size of your yarn and your hook, of course, how many you chain. And also it will depend on the fit that you need for your cat. Now, I can't remember exactly how much I chained last time. I think it might have been 30. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and start my chain. So there's no exact number. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you go ahead and ch chain the amount that you need to create the size of the air hole that you need for your cat. Okay, it will depend on the size of your cat. Like I said, the size of your yarn and your hook size. So, yeah, mine I think was 30 to give an idea. So I'll be going in the ballpark of 30. I'll be checking it out. I'll probably even try it on Melba and just make sure that it's fine. But I know this one's fine so because I've already made it and checked it and it fits her perfectly. So uh, I'm going to match it to this. But if you don't have that, you know, one that you've made previously, assuming you don't, you'll have to just work out how big you need to make these ear holes according to your cat size. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my chain. You do the same and I'll meet you when I'm ready to attach down to this other side here. Okay, so I've done again, once again, 30 and that's going to be big enough for Melba's ears. So what I recommend that you do is because you know, when you're placing anything on the cat's head, the the main problem or the main reason they're going to reject it and not be happy with it and be stressed by it is that it, it touches their ears. So you want it to be really clear of the ears. So you're better off making this chain longer rather than shorter. Okay, so now I'm going to attach it to the other side. So remembering our hexagon, so I'm working, there's my first side, there's that second side and I'm going to attach it to the middle of this third side with a single crochet okay like that now I would also recommend that on these sides you go to the you know to the slightly larger side just like I said before you want the ear holes to be as large as you can make them to avoid any contact with your cat's ears so I'm going to continue placing some single crochets until I get to the halfway point, actually just two more, of this fourth side of my hexagon, if I'm looking at my disc as a hexagon. And then I'm going to do my chain again. I'll obviously chain the same number, chain 30. And then I'm going to, I'll come back and together we'll attach it into the center of, oh, excuse me, of this, of this uh, sixth side. So go ahead and make your second ear hole chain and I'll meet you once I've done mine. Okay, so I've got my second chain there and it's going to come up, like I said, into the center of this sixth, sixth side of our, of our imagined hexagon. And then that leaves me with one stitch and then I slip stitch to join. Okay, so you've got this little thing that looks like this. That's my tail. So you've got this little thing that looks like this. Okay, and now we've got one more round where we will add the ties. So chain one, and we're going to single crochet into each stitch and into each chain until we reach the point where we want to place our ties. Now, what I'll, I'll give you, you can place them wherever you like. And what I would suggest that you do at this point is decide which is going to be the back side and which is going to be the front. Okay? So, and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So, what I would suggest you do is you single crochet along your tie until you get to the area that is just forward of the center. Okay, so if this is my, on this one I've made previously, this is my front, okay? And so this part of the, the ear hole is slightly longer than this part. So I've made it, I've added the tie just to the front of, of center. So you can put them ex exactly at center if you feel like that will fit your cat better, but I've put mine just forward of center. So 
work your single crochets into your chain all the way around one single crochet in each chain until you get to that point where you think you need to start your ties and I'll do the same I'm going to do the same as what I did previously is bring them just slightly forward of center so you know just allowing for the the shape of the cat's head so it's a little bit easier just to tie them under the neck when they're slightly forward of center at least that's my that's my uh, assessment so you may have a different idea to me and you might just want them to be at halfway so what I recommend that you do is you count your you know the number of chains that you made you count your count your stitches and work the number of stitches so if you for example 30 I've made 30 chains I'm going to go just forward of of center so I'm going to in this back side because I've decided this is my back I'm going to go to 16 and then I'm going to start my start my ties chaining for my ties at my 16th chain okay so you go ahead and you do the same and you may even want to put them even further forward than I am whatever you think is going to suit your cat you know most comfortably so I'm going to keep going and I'll meet you when I'm ready to start my chain for the ties okay so I'm going to start my ties here and once again you'll chain you know however many you need to create the length of ties that you need so that's three four five just make sure that you keep count now on once again on this last one to fit Melba and just make a little you know so I can tie a little bow underneath her chin I think I did about 30 chains but again it'll vary depending on the size of your cat the yarn that you're using and the hook size that you're using but I know that that one fits Melba so I'm going to do the same again I'm probably going to chain the 30 so you go ahead and chain the length that you need for the tie first tie and I'll be back soon okay so I've got 30 chains there I'm just going to chain one as a turning chain and then simply slip stitch from the second chain from the hook just simply slip stitch down the length of your chain to create your tie now if you want thinner ties you could change your hook size here and uh, or you could have cha changed it for your chain as well and used a smaller hook size if you want thinner chains in fact you could have you know changed for this whole row if you want this whole row to be a bit smaller you even want the ear these ear parts to be a bit smaller but I'm happy using my three and a half millimeter hook as I've been doing for the rest of the this base section but you know these are all little decisions that you can make depending on the look that you want so I'm going to continue slip stitching down the length of my first tie and then um, once you get to the base of the tie put another single crochet back in that same stitch and then work your single crochets along all the way to this other side and you'll mirror what you've done on this side start your second tie at the you know at the mirror stitch and then you'll chain for your second tie you'll slip stitch back down and then you'll work your way all the way back to the beginning of your round so um, I'm gonna let you just go for it so hopefully that's pretty clear and self-explanatory just one one slip stitch down your chain single crochet all the way to where you want your second tie repeat repeat the process as you did for this first tie continue around and finish up your round and this is going to be your final round so I'll meet you when I'm back at the end of this final round okay I'm just at the base of my first tie there and just another reminder to make sure that you single crochet back into that same stitch at the base of your tie and then I'm going to keep moving around so see you soon okay so I'm just placing my last two single crochets in there in the end of this final round and then just slip stitch to join and then you can yarn over and pull through snip off your tail now what you what you could choose to do here if you want to is leave a long tail 
to sew the two pieces together. I'm not going to do that because I'm using double strand, so I'm going to just I'm just going to tie off here. But if you want to leave a long a long tail to sew your pieces together, otherwise you'll just take a, a new piece of yarn to sew together. But we're just going to weave in these tail ends before we sew on the base. Now you'll want to you want I mean what you could do is you could leave that on the inside, but because you want this to be the top really, you're best just to um, move that tail through. You could you could sew it in. I'm just going to actually, because this is going to be my bottom and the top is going to be on the inside of the hat, all I'm going to do, actually let's just even up that tail, all I'm going to do is just um, pull my tail through. So I'm not actually going to bother to weave in this one. And any time, you might know by now, because I've said it a lot, any time I can avoid um, weaving in an end is a win for me. So I'm going to just push that through and leave that tail. And that's just going to be on the inside of my hat, so it's going to be fine. But this one here, I'll need to weave through, but I don't need to weave it through very far. I can just... Oops. I can just weave it through and bring it onto the inside as well. So that's a bit of a bonus. And I'm weaving my, my two tails together. So all I need to do really is just, I'll just pull it through to the centre there. Oops, one's come undone. Anyway, I'll finish that off off camera. I'm just bringing my two tail ends into into the inside of the where the hat will sit. So you do the same. Just tidy up your tail ends. Deal with them how you would like to deal with them. Actually, I'm going to be able to do this right now like this. Okay, so there's my tail ends on the inside. So that will go on the inside of the hat. So you'll take your hat and a, another piece of yarn or your long tail if you're using your tail and we're just going to simply sew these two together. So you've got your front, make sure you've, you're going, actually I'm around the wrong way, yeah so don't do that. <laughs> make sure, I'll just move that one out of the way, make sure you're using your back as your back because remember you unless you you know did completely halfway for your ties you want your ties to be sitting at the front oops twisted and then what I would probably recommend is a good idea is because you've got your your front point there and or you know this is what I do I just put in a little pin just to make sure that doesn't move from center And then I'm just going to take a length of my length of my purple yarn, thread my needle, and I'm simply going to sew these two together just with a you know a light sort of tacking stitch. So I'll just start up here on this side. So you don't want it to go, excuse me, you don't want it to go through to the other side of the hat. So just pick up one of the stitches on the inside and just I'll just pull through enough and you'll just pick up yeah one of the stitches on the inside and then one of the stitches along the edge of the of the disc and you'll just work your way around just doing a simple sewing technique you know or you can you know you can sew it on however you like I don't feel like this needs to be you know like you could do stitch by stitch I don't I'm sort of doing every second stitch here because I, I don't feel you know it doesn't need to be super super tight as long as the, the two are just attached together and then when I get to the center point, it's up to you what you do here, these, these center points here. What I have been doing and what I did for the last one is I just work my, my yarn through 
and actually you can just catch it just on the, the edge there actually that's what I'll do first I'll just catch it on the edge and then I just weave my tail through and I don't need that pin in there anymore and I'll just weave my yarn through to the other side you can you know you can you can sew it you can go up here and actually sew these two parts together I'm not going to worry about doing that but however it feels you know however it feels right to you and then I'm just going to go down this other side here with the same just simple sort of tacking stitch And then I'm going to finish off, obviously, back around here. And then I'll just have this one tail end to weave in. Okay, so you go ahead and finish sewing off your end. What I'm going to do, my my nails, my sorry, my needle has just come out from the thread, so I'm going to. Um, pause and uh, re-thread but I'm just going to finish off on this side and then once again I'm going to weave my yarn through to this other side where I started and I'm going to just tie a, a little simple knot so those stay together at the back here okay so I'm just through and I've got my both my tail ends on this one side here and I'll just shorten them shorten them down and like I said, I'm just going to tie just a simple double knot there. And then I've just got these two tail ends to weave in. So I'm just going to do them together once again. So finish off your project. I'm going to um, just hop myself off camera once again and do this weaving in off camera. I'm going to assume that you, you know, you feel pretty comfortable weaving in an end. Just weave in underneath the loops in your stitches and uh, I'll meet you once I've done mine and we'll finish off together. Okay, so I'm just finishing off weaving in that end. It's going to be underneath the hat anyway, so, you know, it doesn't have to be super, super neat, but just make it secure. I'll just come back a little bit. You can go across your, your magic ring just to make sure that's secure if you want to. Across the centre of your magic ring. And then just snip off any excess. And you're done. So how cute is that? <laughs> I just adore this purple colour. I think it's super cute for a colourful witch's hat. And I also love the I also love the green. So I would love to see photos of your witch's hat, and uh, if you can manage to get them on your cat for a couple of minutes to uh, take a photo or two, I would love to see them. So please send them along to catventurous.community at gmail.com, or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So thanks very much for being here, and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Oh, baby. You're not happy about the hat today? You're not happy about the hat today? Oh, baby. <laughs> Hi, baby. You're pretty, right? Yeah.